What's more fun than smoked brisket? Five tips for smoking brisket on a Weber kettle. Hey guys, welcome back to Greenhorn Barbecue and Beer. If you're new here, my name is Todd, and I couldn't be happier that you guys have chosen our channel to stop by, watch a few videos. So as the title implies, I got five tips to smoking a brisket on a Weber kettle. So before I go too much farther, I wanna show you guys our new shirt here. It's got uh, Suds McBacon, he's our new mascot. We also got some stickers, which are pretty cool. All you gotta do is go check out our Teespring store and I'll drop a link down in the description to it. Low, low prices, they're pretty cool shirts. And if you see something that you want done differently, just get a hold of me. So guys, I don't wanna keep you longer than we have to, so let's get right into tip number one. Prepare your brisket. Now, that might seem like a pretty obvious tip, but you know what? Instead of following someone else's idea of a taste profile, do a blend of seasoning that suits your taste because when you're cooking on a Weber, you're gonna get the smoke, you're gonna get that charcoal taste if you're looking for it, and that's already gonna add so much flavor to the brisket. In this case, I took some salt and pepper and mixed it with several different varieties of Uncle Steve's Shake, made a really nice little blend. I did a light trim, obviously, and here is where you wanna make sure that your brisket fits onto your Weber. So start with about a 15 pounder, work your way down. And if you find that it's still a little bit too long, just trim a little bit off the flat. You know, it's probably gonna burn away anyway, some of the thinner parts, just to make sure it fits. All right, tip number two, set up your cooker. So there's all kinds of Weber accessories available from Weber or from any number of cottage industries that have popped up over the years. What I'm running right now is a slow and sear stainless steel charcoal basket pushes all the charcoal off to the side, and the model I have actually has a little baffle for water. That added water benefit's gonna help control your temperatures in your cooking chamber and just promote a better cooking experience for your meat. Also, get yourself a grate that has a little trap door on each end. That way you can add wood chunks or extra charcoal as you're cooking. Comes in really handy. Also, this is a good time to put a little drip pan down below on what is typically the charcoal grate. You could even add more water there if you want. And then when you're preparing your fire, what I like to do is get a little fist full of charcoal briquettes, start them in the far corner. And once that gets going, then I fill up the rest of the basket. And with this cook, I'm using Royal Oak Ridge. It's got a really nice blend of hardwood and uh, just really like it a lot. So the wood chunks I'm using is some hickory and cherry. It's actually all I had. I wish I had some post white oak from Texas, but uh, you know, we're out here on the West Coast. It's hard to come by in my county. One little extra word of caution when you're putting in your, when you're putting in your wood chunks, try to separate them enough because that might help the fire jump over and start lighting your whole basket on fire. So be careful about that. All right, tip number three. Three, I like number three. Get yourself a quality thermometer. So I'm going with like three different methods here. I got the Weber one that's on top of the lid, which really is kind of worthless in this type of cook because you want your exhaust on your lid over the top of your meat. Okay, so that's where you're gonna regulate your temperature. The bottom I have almost wide open. I, I think I cracked it maybe about 90% of the way. And then many months ago, I installed a Teltru thermometer right there below the exhaust and I put it closer to grate level. Gives me a much more accurate reading for the type of cooking that I do. And then get yourself a nice cloud enabled Wi-Fi Bluetooth wireless thermometer. I have a Fireboard, um, just now getting used to it and trying it out. So far, it's an awesome device. It uses the cloud, it uses my home's Wi-Fi, and it's an awesome device. The reason you need to have really powerful temperature devices, temperature reading devices, is that the temperature is really crucial. You want, not only do you want that target temperature that I'm going for at the beginning of right around 225 average, you want to be able to check it when you're doing other things in your house. Life happens, you're going to wander away, 
you got to know what your smoker's doing. And this is going to give you the ability to tell if you got a flare up or if it's getting cold. So do yourself a favor, go get you one. They're not necessarily the cheapest tool you can buy, but it's going to last a long time. Tip number four. And this tip is just something that I like to do. We all know, most of you might know, about the stall. A lot of people believe it happens around 165. I actually discovered this brisket started stalling right about 155, 158. It started to kind of go very slowly. It stopped wanting to kind of to climb much further than that. Using that grate that has the trap door that I was telling you about, it was time to add some more charcoal, so I just pushed it off to the corner again, the charcoal that was still good, and then I filled the rest with uh, new charcoal, and then I closed it, but this was a good time to spritz the brisket and also increase the temperature a little bit higher. So I, I, since I'm really tracking the averages, which is what the fireboard is capable of doing, is gives you the real-time average, I'd, I'd like to have the average temp go up about another 20 degrees, maybe even 40 degrees, something closer to 275. So again, I start at 225, and I'm going to finish up at 275. Not really finish up and when I get ready to wrap then I'm going to crank it up to 300 or more okay so that brings me to tip number five wrap your brisket we all know to wrap some people use foil some people use pink butcher paper the less fortunate use white butcher paper you can use a paper shopping bag just take out all the glue and any other sticky chemicals you might see on there but you want to wrap so Generally speaking, you want to wrap after the brisket has beaten the stall. And again, I'm powering through the stall. I'm going to raise my average temperature up and power through that stall. So I'm targeting 170 for that point where I'm going to wrap. But when I'm wrapping, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to wrap it. And after I'm done wrapping, I'm going to put it back on this, the grill in the same manner. In this case, I've chosen to do fat side up. And I'm also going to wet the butcher paper before I put my brisket in there. And then I'm going to add a little bit more moisture. And I haven't decided yet, but I might take a little Campbell's beef broth or some of the spritz or both. and Just make sure it's nice and, and wet in there. I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to use enough paper so I can flip it three times, tuck it in nice and tight, and then right back on there. So I wanted to mention one more thing to you guys. See these barrels over here? That's gonna be my next heavy project here. I'm gonna to have to pull out the welder, get some tools going, and come up with my own 55 gallon ugly drum smoker design. My model is gonna be after a pit barrel cooker, but I'm gonna to try to make it with as many freely sourced parts that I can. That means looking through dumpsters if I have to, cast off metal bins and uh, all kinds of stuff. I've got a lot of spare metal from my early builds 10 years ago. So we're gonna have to see what we can come up with. So if you got any interesting ideas or a video you wanna share about your own 55 gallon ugly drum smoker build, hit me up on Facebook group, Greenhorn Barbecue Beer Discussions page. Show me what you're cooking with. All right, guys. So I'm gonna get back to this little thing over here. All we got left to do is wait till the sun goes down and then unwrap that brisket. All right, guys, it's been nine hours on the Weber, another one hour resting. It's time to take a look. So uh, let's unwrap it here. Haven't seen this in about three hours, I guess. Three or four hours. Now, if you're concerned about uh, waste, this paper is really good to save as fire starter. And, uh, Works really good at that. Wow, look at that. All right, there we go. There's some bark right there. All right, let's get this out of there. I just wants to fall apart here. Let's slide that out. Okay, okay, not bad. Got a little bit of jiggle. Not bad at all. Okay, so the grain runs this way. So, now I'm going to cut it right in half, right about here. Okay. Not bad, not bad. 
So again, this is the point. This has got all the good stuff, the wet stuff here. Give you a little bit of a money shot. Okay. Now, to cut these, you're gonna turn 90 degrees and cut right in half. There we go. I'm gonna take that piece right there and I'm just gonna set it up like that. Nice. If you guys would like to see the squeeze, get a little piece right here. Mm. Oh. Slicing nice. That's good, babe. Real pink. Yeah, not bad at all. I'll take a piece right here. Well, this is about as far as you can get almost from the point. <laughs> not bad, not bad. Now you're seeing how that uh, smoke ring there pretty well formed on the point. Okay, now let's see. It, it should hang on its own weight, and it does. Now let's give it a gentle tug. Yes, oh, wow. snaps right <laughs> apart. There we go, take a bite of this. Oh. All right guys, hope you've enjoyed this video. Five tips for making a brisket on the Weber kettle. Really enjoyed having you here today. Folks, if you like this video, please tap that subscribe button. Now, as always, we'd love it if you share this video with your friends and family, especially your kettle heads out there, and comment down below. Tell us what your tips are for cooking a brisket on a wet. So until next time, folks, see you guys later.